everybody, and welcome to the colony, the place where if you understand, then you're part of our family, the colony. Day 9, date 12, 2019. Please close the door on the way in. Thank you. I'm glad you guys are here. You guys could be anywhere, but I know you guys know that this is very important for us to gather like this in this colony session. There's no place like home. There's no place like security. A place we can come to that can douche out common sense. No tricks. No gags, no uh, under the table payments. You do your payment up front when you come here with an open heart and uh, want to discuss spiritual topics. Now, before we get started on this uh, session, I you know that we start off. I want to start off, I want to start off, with the Rashid Portal Passage, because this is our first step onto a meaningful discussion. So I hope you have a pen and paper in handy, that you can take notes, and write down what we have to, what you may get from this. Because I know I have my pencil and paper handy. Sweetie, you ready to do this? Alright. I will begin with the Rashi Portal Passage. And it goes as follows. I come from a small world. The world in which I reside now, along with its sufferings, will not change me. We see a lot of sufferings all over the place, guys. You know, we could be going through some... Of course we're suffering. Yeah, without a doubt, sweetie. Everybody's suffering. Everybody's suffering. But the point of the matter is... Will it change... Will your sufferings change you? You see... It says in the scriptures... That... Endure under tribulation. For Joyce and a hope, endure under tribulation. Persevere in prayer. Those three things. And when I belong to the the JW congregation, and I had we had a convention. That was the name of the convention. Yeah, but Joyce and a hope, endure under tribulation. Persevere in prayer. Very, very powerful words is in the scriptures there. And that was the name of our convention. That right there. But the point of the matter is we have to endure under tribulation. That means not changing. Standing firm when we're going through tribulation. So we're enduring. Our, our endurance, because the scriptures also say, he that endures to the end is the one that will be saved. So endurance doesn't have change in it. There's no kind of um, equally relatable context that, that that will coincide with Endurance when you come when you come to the word change. Endure means to stand firm and just get through what you're getting through. So along with this world's sufferings, it, it, we gotta be uh, very mindful that we don't change, and that's putting what's important first, and that's spirituality in our lives, because it's very very important. Also, we have the Rashid Portal poem, and. Uh, I know you guys uh, have that written down. And we start off by saying, as we uh, continue to step forward into our discussion, 
My eyes see, but I am blind. My heart beats, but I am dead. With my hands I touch, but I cannot feel. Nonetheless, we're underwater, and yet we breathe. By spirituality, we're breathing, guys. We're underwater, and yet we breathe. <clears throat> very, very encouraging words, then, because sometimes we numb out. You know, I was looking at a um a lecture, a spiritual lecture, and he was talking about how. Well, actually, he was talking about the book of Revelation. He was actually talking about the book of Revelation and how in the last days we might be uh, put before kings and governors. And at that time, don't worry about what to say. You see, don't worry about what to say. The Holy Spirit is going to do the talking at that time. God's Spirit is going to do the talking at that time. So if we come to that, if we if we come to that, you don't have to worry about anything because at that time God's spirit will do all the talking. Jesus said, "If you have the faith to, as the size of a mustard grain, you can tell one mountain to move, and it will move." You see, if you have one grain faith. Of a seed of a mustard grain. You got to have faith. That that means the littlest faith can do tremendous things. The reason why I point that out is because. We are entering God's new kingdom. There's no doubt about it. This is it. This is it. This is the change we was looking for. You know. And it, is, it could be really frightful. For a lot of spiritual people, particularly like if you're a Bible uh, a student, and in a Quran for Muslims, I, I don't know really know, but I know it's along the lines of of um, Muhammad or Allah coming back and waging war on people that don't believe. So it's around the same. It's around the same. Context of fearful. It's very. It's a, this is a very fearful time right here. We may know, in other words, because it's coinciding with the Rashi portal palm. We don't know why we breathe and see the spirit helps us out to breathe. You see, we don't know why we're able to stand up right now. During this time of entering God's kingdom. The spirit is helping us do that. And we know it's going to get worse. We know that it's not going to stay like this. We know it's going to get worse. See we have to be prepared. To take on these things that the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation said is about to happen. We got to be prepared for these things. We have to be prepared for things will come upon the habited earth. That will make man faint. We have to be prepared for um, the stars falling from heaven and the moon turning to blood, and all of these things. So right now, it's just this is the core of everything. This, in other words, this is the apex. This is the apex. There's a lot of trickery going on. There's a lot of words trickery going on. There's a lot of Misleading topics going on now that social media is here. You got a frenzy of uh, trickeries and, and traps for the honest hearted spiritual people out there. We don't know how long this going to last. We don't know. But continue on but continuing on with a normal topic before we tackle this normal topic, 
I want to draw our attention to the Amish women on inside the colony. Inside the colony. And if you notice, when I'm doing this, y'all notice that I am not scripted. I'm not doing no scripts. I'm not reading from nothing, guys. I'm doing this right out of my head. I'm not reading from a, from a prompter. But in a way, I am reading from something. I'm reading from experience. Did you believe that? I'm reading from experience. Hmm. So I'm reading from something there. Yeah, I never thought of it that way, sweetie. Reading from experience. Nonetheless, the Amish girls here, I don't have one for this week. I do have one, but I'm not ready to put her up right now. I'm holding I have a reason why. I have a reason why. I'm selfish with the Amish women. I'm selfish because, you guys, y'all know, it's just, it's it's not a sin, but it's one of my uh, weaknesses. I'm selfish with her. I'm very, very selfish with her. I'm not ready to put it up right now. <laughs> but I am next um, colony discussion. I am going to put it up because uh, I think that uh, it'll be time, you know, It'll be time. And then right after that, there'll be another Amish woman I'll put around here. Put up around here. They give the frosting. A cake, you can have a cake, but when you put frost into it, it's so much better, you know? And uh, their devotion and their lifestyle is just so unique. And they are lessened for other people that they can do... um, they can do something similar of, uh, you know, you live in a world where you got to be a part of the world, you know, or you want to be part of the world. But there exist people that, that live like this, and they're an example that it can be done of separating yourself, you know. They, it can be done, and these people are proof that it can be done. Without no kind of animosity whatsoever. So then again, but so I have another Amish woman in the next um, topic on the colony. So there goes the Rashid colony women. Now continuing on to with this discussion here is let's let's talk about faith. That's the discussion I want to talk about. I want to talk about faith and how hard it is to believe that God is real right now and how hard it is to believe that even though we're going through inside the threshold and coming out roses with God's kingdom, Why is it still hard to believe? Well, did you know the Israelites had that problem? Now, the Israelites was under slavery to Egypt. Right, sweetie? Let's get down to it. I mean, my uh, people, we love this story about what happened about the deliverance of the Israelites. Anyway, the Israelites were under... The slavery of Egypt. God sent Moses. It took Moses 40 years. 40 goddamn years. To to be ready. To lead God's people out of Egypt. 40 years. He was in his 80's. When he did it. 40 years. To prepare. To lead the people out of Egypt. 40 years. It took them 40 years before God approached them and asked them to do it. Now, after seeing the plagues that God put upon Egypt, the sea turning to blood, let's see if I can name them all. You had gnats, you had flies. You had the frogs. 
you had the river turning to blood. You had dense darkness. And the firstborn, you know, you had the firstborn that was killed. That was the last, that was the last straw right there, the firstborns of everybody being killed. Now, I said the gadflies. I said they had flies. I said they were called gadflies back then. I don't think we have any gadflies right now. But um, they were flies. They were they were pestilence. After all of that, of seeing that, now, now, now the Israelites seen all of that. They saw their deliverance from Moses. They, they experienced their deliverance from Moses. Split the Red Sea right in front of their eyes. They crossed on dry ground. Dry ground, not wet. The ground wasn't wet. The ground was dry. Made it to the other side. Well, of course, when the Egyptians tried, they got swept away. They got washed away. Now, keep in mind that the Israelites saw that. They saw the whole thing. They saw the whole thing. Now they're being led to the promised land. God is directing them as they walk in by a cloud, a lighted cloud during the daytime. And at nighttime he has a pillar of fire, like a ball of fire. So they're watching the cloud during the, during the daytime. And at nighttime, they were watching a ball of fire leading them out of Egypt. Don't go into the promised land. Now, did you know that along the way, they still started to complain a little bit? God has placed a pillar of of cloud during the daytime now. All the time they walk and they see it. And at nighttime it turns to a fireball. And they still was complaining. Still was complaining. They got over there to the camp, the wilderness, and had to eat manna. We already understand it. We are they had to eat manna. After going through and seeing God's power Face to face, all of them failed to go to the promised land. Now, let's draw our let's draw our attention to today in today's world right now. That was ancient times. Now today, all we have is that book, the Bible. <laughs> all we have now. Think now. The Egyptians, I mean the Israelites, the Israelites, been through all of that mayhem and saw God's glory and power and still lacked faith. Now look at that Bible right there that's in front of you or where have you or do you use. That's all we have is God's word. See, Jesus set the tone for that. See, before Jesus, it was a lot of miracles and stuff. And they were saying that the promised seed is going to come and show us. So a lot of things back in, back in ancient times were accepted back then. You know, it's kind of like if I, had a, if I was living in a house with brothers and sisters all through it. Okay. And we're doing what we want to do in that house. And then my our guardian come and say, It's okay to do all these things, but just know somebody's going to come and set the record straight. And then when they come, we're going to have to do things a different way. And me and my brothers and sisters say, Okay, yeah. So we're doing all of these cra this crazy shit. 
And she's intervening with what we're doing so we don't get in trouble or whatever, you know. All of a sudden, somebody come to our house and say, okay, that's it. No more horsing around, you kids. No more horsing around. This is the way we're going to do things now. That's why we do it the Bible way. See, when Jesus came, he stopped all the miracles. He stopped all of the Ten Commandments being written. He stopped all the sea turning to blood. He stopped all, all of the Moses raising his hands up in the air and doing this. And he, Jesus stopped all of that. He stopped um, Lot's persecution of, okay, God is doing this to me and the people knowing God. Jesus stopped. Jesus stopped. Events taking place on the earth like, what is this guy doing? Oh, this asshole is building a big ark. And saying it's going to rain out the sky. And, 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 you know, all of these mystical stories that happen. See, it's Greek, the Bible is Greek and Hebrew scriptures. The Greek scriptures I'm talking about. Anybody else talking about the Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew? What about the Greeks? Give them some credit. So anyway, the Greek scriptures, all of these stories. The first half of the Bible is stories. The last half of the Bible is the gospel with Jesus. The Bible is split in two. The first half we got stories. The second half we got Jesus all the way down to Armageddon. The end of the world. That's where we at now. The second half. Not the first half, guys. The second half. We use the first half for examples of how God is for his personality. How his disciples... um. Uh, walk with him, and in in these stories can help us do Jesus' teachings of following the gospel. You understand? They go, the Bible goes hand in hand. That's why it's a very unique book. So the first half of the Bible we got stories. Second half is the gospel with Jesus. And so when Jesus came, he set atonement and said, "Okay." That's the end of all of the miracles. But because you're used to the miracles. I'm going to do a lot of miracles. That's why when he got baptized, a voice came out, came down out of heaven and said, This is my son of beloved. Holy Spirit hit him like doves. And he told his disciples, Truly you will see angels descending and sending into heaven above. Now that I'm starting my course on preaching. So in other words, he was saying, Buckle up, because y'all going to see some stuff. Kind of like Back to the Future. Remember Back to the Future? When he said, man, when this, when this machine hits such and such, such and such, you're going to see some serious shit. In other words, that's what Jesus said. He said, now y'all going to see some serious stuff now. Y'all going to see hey, the heavens open up and everything. Follow me. Because now he got his memory back of who he is and so forth. So that's when he started off on his ministry. And then y'all know he kicked some butt all around the place. All we till he gave himself as a sacrifice. So the point I'm trying to make is we stick to the Bible only because Jesus taught us to do it this way. You see. Jesus didn't taught us to split the Red Sea and do this and all this. He told his his concubines, his disciples, that they going to be trampling on scorpions, doing healings, casting out demons, because they're his brothers of 144,000 that's going to reign with him in heaven. He didn't mean everybody. See, we're the other sheep. See, Bible, the Jesus said, also my brothers, I have other sheep that I must bring also. See, we're the other sheep. Like other sheep don't do healings and all of this stuff. The only Jesus' brothers, his closest disciples, he told them that. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. That's why they names in the Bible. That's why they names in the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Their names right there. They all Jesus' disciples right there in the Bible. You see. They will do the healings and all of that. If they did that. Because you know God is behind it. You know God behind everything. All credit and praise to the Almighty. How strong is our faith, guys? 
when all we have is that book and Jesus' teachings of how to live. And we have these stories on examples of how Jeremiah was. And how he was yelling at God, saying, you tricked me. You fooled me. You made a mockery of me. But it's just showing you the relationship you can have with God. That's why everything is put in the Bible for our benefit. So we can see how he, how to deal with God. What kind of person is God? Is God? How are we going to have faith in God? Jesus said, how are you going to have not have faith in man you see that's standing in front of you? And have faith with the Almighty that you don't see. You see? Or some way or another it says that, you know. You see, how are you going to say you love your brother that you see in front of you? You say, I love my brother. Or don't love your brother. No, how can you say you don't love your brother? And just say you see you love God that you don't see. In some way or another, it says that. The point is, this is the point. The Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. That's period. Now, no matter what happens, no matter what nobody say, no matter what nobody do, we walk by. We're walking by faith, not by sight. Not by sight. No matter what your role dish out to you that's material or whatever. We walk by faith, not by sight. By faith, the Bible says everything was accomplished. Moses, Job, John, the Apostle Paul. Everything was done by faith. And y'all know there's advanced in the Bible that the Bible brings it out. We walk by faith, not by sight. It says, no, it says, um, if you say you love, you don't love your brother, you love your brother that you see in front of you, then how can you say you love God that's not in front of you? If you don't say you love your brother that's in front of you, hate your brother, then how can you say you love God that you can't see? And you can see your brother in front of you and not loving him, you know, and it makes, you know, completely good sense. It makes sense. That's why God says. I'm talking to my baby. That's why God says that um, if you got anybody talking anything bad about you, I don't listen to you. I don't hear words you're saying. See, leave your gift at the altar. Go out and make peace with your brother first. Then come back and worship me. Then I will listen to you. It's very strict. Love, God said, the, the, no, there's no law greater than love. And and a lot of Christians hear that, and y'all Christians know, because y'all point your finger at me, and y'all know, and I don't care y'all point your finger at me. I put up with y'all. I do. I put up with y'all. But a lot of y'all point your finger at me, but yet and still, if you don't love your brother as yourself, and, and, and your brother got something against you, then who's wasting their time? See, God said he don't hear your prayers. If your brother got something against you, you leave your gift right there. You stop serving. God said, I don't want to hear you. Make peace with your brother first. Then come back. Then I'll listen to you. Then I'll listen to you. You see. And a lot of Christians, you ever see the Mickey Mouse show? It says, this is the Mickey Mouse show, the beginning of it. And this is Christians today. This is Christians. They say, here's the Mickey Mouse show. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E, Mickey Mouse. And what does Donald Duck do when he say that, when he sing that? The old Mickey, I'm talking the classic Mickey Mouse, back in the 50s. Donald Duck closes ears and say, Donald Duck. When they say Mickey Mouse, he say Donald Duck instead of Mickey Mouse. Because Donald Duck want to hear his name. He don't want to hear Mickey Mouse's name. So it's M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> he want to hear his name. Christians are just like that. Because, see, there's a lot of things going on in the Bible and all that Christians don't want to hear. 
And every time they you they hear it, they go bah, 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 and cover their ears. That's fine because what you're doing is mocking God. You're summing your nose up at God. If God said the your, the identifying mark of a true Christian is love then the identifying mark of a true Christian is love. Now, you can cover your ears all you want, go, bah, 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 all you want, all you want. But in the end, you're going to lose. You can't skip over one thing and expect to enter God's kingdom. What did God say? Above, love God, your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul, love your neighbor as yourself, there's no laws greater than these. But all we see, all over the place, all around. That's okay. That's all right. Donald Duck, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. There is no thumb of your nose up at God. Nor will there ever be thumb of your nose up at God. At God. Let me ask you a question. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, guys. All right? Just just hear me out. Hear me out. Say, Rashid, full of shit, you know, this and that. Just hear me out. Just hear me out. Let me ask you a question. Answer me truthfully. The real the real deal, guys. The real deal. All y'all spiritual people, y'all know we all part of a spiritual family out here. You know, we all part of a spiritual group. We all part of spiritual family, and I watch y'all videos. I do. Y'all point your finger at me, and I know y'all do, because you know I've I've seen what y'all been doing, signifying me, but I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into that. But not yet and still, answer me a question. What if you found out? You might die tomorrow. You might die. It's not real. It's not a guarantee that you're going to die tomorrow. But you found out that you might die tomorrow. You might die. Anybody that uploads or evangelists on stage or whatever... Even you guys who do your normal everyday life, what would you do? What would you do? How would you be? How would you be? Think about it. This is 100% serious now. You found out you might die tomorrow. 100% serious. No joking. No bullshit. How would you view things? How? How would you view things? Okay, let's let let's let's do this another way, because I don't, I don't think you guys get the point. Let's do this another way, another way, another way. Check this out. Check this out now. What if?
e fé não. That it's going to rain tomorrow. And you got to go out. No, I'm not talking normal rain. I'm talking rain, rain, like a thunderstorm. It's going to be blustery winds and thunderstorms tomorrow. And you know you have to go out tomorrow. Now you have to get ready to go out tonight. What would you do? You'll prepare. This is what I'm saying to you. This is why I'm saying this. This is the question I'm asking here. Will you be the same person that you are now? It's so funny. You know why it's so funny? That parable that Jesus gave about the mustard grain. Having faith the size of a mustard grain. If you have faith the size of a mustard grain, you can tell what mountain to move. And it'll move. Having a faith the size of, you know how tiny a mustard grain is? You ever get a jar of mustard? Alright, that's all mustard. Imagine one of those seeds. You know how tiny that is? If you have that much faith, you can do wonders. Now, there's a lot of Christians out here, and Muslims, and Muslims, and Buddhas, and Catholics. And y'all all all listening to me. I know you are. Now, what if you found out that tomorrow, Allah, or if you believe in Allah, or Jesus, is going to come for real? 100% 100% No adjectives No preservatives We talking about The real deal See one thing about God A lot a lot of men See man think God is stupid Christians A lot of Christians Think God is stupid But see God See, Jesus, see, God set up booby traps all around in his gospel for everybody that thinks he's a dumbass. I'll give you one. I'll give you one. Remember the verse where it says, if somebody say, there's the Christ, do not go out. Or somebody say, look over here, there's the Christ, do not go out, do not answer that. Then the Bible says, many will come on the basis of my name, saying, I'm the Christ, and mislead many. Did he not say that? During the time of the end. He said, therefore, somebody come and say, there he is over here, do not go out. So, here's the question. If God come tomorrow, how we know it's going to be the real God? In other words, when Jesus said that, why his disciples didn't ask, well, Jesus, how we know it's going to be you? Suppose you come back and we see you and say, that's not you. It's not you. I mean, you know, in religion today, you got you got so many looks, Jesus. You got a white man look. Jehovah Witness got you looking like like a um, uh, a, a, a Hebrew, a dark skinned Hebrew, and Buddha they got God looking like a, a big fat um, person is laughing with a smile on his face, and 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 and, and we could go oh, Muslim. How are we gonna know it's you when you come back? And it could be the real you. So somebody could say, oh, well here's Christ right here. We got proof. He, he said he's going to come on the, great, on the clouds with great glory on the clouds. How do we know that's going to be you? Satan himself transformed into an angel of light? Did anybody ask Jesus that? 
But guess what? See that Bible? It left it just like that. Now, think about your faith now. Now, answer this question. Are your faith going to be tested? Yes or no? Is your faith going to be tested now? It's all waiting for every Christian believer or spiritual believer. It's all waiting for you. This is going to be hard. This is going to be hard. It says in the last days a lot of people will stand up and do this and that and that. A lot of uh, strange things going to be happening with people. How are we going to know if it's the real Christ? Jesus said, if they say this is Christ, don't believe him. Did Jesus say, you will know it's me because of the sound of my voice. That's how you're going to know it's me. Or you will know it's me because I'm not the white man. I'm Hebrew. You will know it's, did God say that at all? How are we supposed to know? He said, if somebody come, don't believe it. Oh, we gonna just know, huh? You mean to tell me us sinful people gonna just know? Now, what if it was happening tomorrow? In fact, what if it was happening tonight? Look at yourself. Do you have that faith? The the size of a mustard grain, you see. You see? Do you have faith? See, one thing that we got to be comfortable about is that in the scriptures, God says he's going to tell the unbelievers, get away from me. I do not what? He said, they're going to say, Lord, Lord, did we not do all these powerful things in your name? Did we not? And God will answer them and say, I do not what? No. You. I do not know you. Now, if we had the faith connected with God knowing us, what can we be positive about? That we'll be okay when it happens. We will know Jesus. We will know Jesus' second coming. You know why? Because God will say, I know this person. So we will know. How do we know all of this? Because it's in the scriptures. He said, many will come and say, God, did we not do all these marvelous things? Did we not cast out demons? He says, get away from me. You workers. Of lawlessness. I do not know you. Yet he will sign them their position. I mean they don't have a, a spot out there. It will be already set. Like you put an ice tray. Like in the ice box. And you get ice. And nowadays yeah baby. The refrigerator comes with ice. And you put the cup on. And it comes with ice and all. But. They will have like a cookie cutter. You already set. They will, they will, God going to assi- assign them their position in the world with the rest of the world. Meaning they'll have an area. God, gonna, God got an area for them. And he's going to assign them their area. Go to your area. Don't come over here with me. You got a space right there waiting for you. See, God had an area for them. Or they could have made the area themselves. Either or, they got an area. God gonna say, go right over there, like you tell a pet or something. Go over in your area where you did all your sinning and all your boastfulness and all your bad. Go right over there. Don't come over here. I don't know you. Now, God is the Father. When Jesus come back, who you gonna go to if you got a question? See the point? And if God knew you through all of the years, what's going to happen? God going to let you know what's going on with this Jesus, this on the clouds with great glory. You see how it all works out? If you have that personal relationship with God, God says, draw close to him and he will draw close to you. 
He said, draw close to God and he will draw close to you. And how you do that is by learning his will and doing your utmost best to follow it. Can't be perfect at it. You can forget that. You can forget that. You can't be perfect at it, but we can do the best we can. And if we're doing the best we can, we can be confident God knows our heart and will help us out through the rest. You understand? But we got to be honest with God. We have to be real with God. We can't we can't say, Okay, God ain't looking at this, so I'm not gonna talk about it. you gotta God said the Bible says you gotta pour out your heart to God. He said, Give me your load, give me your problems. Pour out your heart to him. When you pour when you got a glass of water and you pour it in a sink. Okay. That's what it means. It means pour out, your Bible says, pour out your heart to God. Let Him know your intimate, intimate issues and situations. Then He will work with you in your life. The way, the kind of, all of us different. See, that's another thing about Christians. They think everybody the same. The way God going to work with me, He's going to work with you that way. When in history in the Bible it ever was like that, all the disciples, the apostles were different, and God worked in them, worked with them, all in their unique standing way. All in their unique standing way. Likewise today, we're all different. But when you go to church and you're all sitting in the congregation, and you're all in the congregation, and you're all sitting around in the congregation, start looking at each other, start talking to each other, start getting to know each other. For some reason, you think God gonna work with everybody the same. You see, that's not what's gonna happen. The Bible says each one will be judged by their own law. See, all of these things we. Have, Mickey Mouse. No. We all going to be judged in the same way. That's not what the scriptures say. You're not, you're not paying it. You see, you can't skip. You're not Mary Poppins. You can't skip. Each one will be dealt with in their own sinning. Because God knows how you feel about your own sinning. I don't care who sees you sin. God knows how you feel about your own sinning. So he's going to deal with you and your own sinning. Did you bring that sin to me? Did you tell me how hard it was to stop that sin? See, that's pouring your heart out to God, you see. That's why in the end, God going to know who you are. He's going to know who you are. For the rest, I do not know you. That's going to be for the rest. I do not know you. See, if you draw close to God, he'll draw close to you. And he'll know you. So in the end, I know this. I know this person. Well, we don't want the Lord to say you don't know us. And how is by pouring our heart out to God, letting Him see our struggles, letting Him see what we like to do, what sins we like to do, letting Him see our inner self, not holding nothing back, and talking about how much we like this, how much we don't like this. I like my sin because of this, God. You created it. I can't help it. You see the point? That way God will know us. And in turn, we'll have that mustard grain faith that Jesus spoke about. See, that's going to build our faith. I know my Father. My father know me because every time I sinned, he was there. I talked to him after I did it. I talked to him while I was doing it. In fact, I talked to him before. I talked to him while I was going to get whatever it is to do it. 
I was talking to him. I can't help it. I'm pissed off. I can't help it, God. I've got to do it. Then why? While I'm high, I can't believe I'm high, God. I said I went. I, I just wasn't thinking, and and um, I don't know. I just, as a loving father, will he punish you? See, all of this is joined close to God. Seeing God as a real individual, not as some fable in a book. Not as some, okay, he's just up there somewhere and just forgot about mankind. No, you got to see God realistically like you see anything else. Realistically. Your faith will get strengthened when you see God. See, Moses was close to God that much that God said Moses looked like him. God told Miriam that Moses has the appearance of myself. And that's why Moses was so close to God that he asked him on the mount with the Ten Commandments before God. He said, God, can I see you? That's how close he was with God. He just wanted to see him. He said, okay, no man may see me and yet live, but avail yourself and I'll brush by you. And what Moses saw, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. His face isn't raised. Y'all know the story. Y'all know the story. His face isn't raised and everything. But the point of the matter is, Moses had that faith. Moses had powerful faith. See, would you believe, would you believe, I know, sweetie, would you believe that in order for the, the disciples to carry out their mission, God knew that they needed concrete faith. Concrete faith. Not just any ordinary faith. Concrete faith. That's why God approached Noah. That's why God approached Moses. That's why God approached Jeremiah. Concrete. See, God knew I got to approach them. And they will have that concrete faith to do my will. And you may look around on planet Earth and say, Where God? Where's our concrete faith for us to do your will? All we have is a book. It's what's inside the book that's concrete faith. Seeing who he is. For instance, I'll give you an example. Say you went to you went to a history school. You went to, you got a history class. And you wanna know about what's his name? Um um Billy the Kid or something. And you say, How bad was this Billy the Kid guy? How bad was he? And you start flipping through the pages, and you reading page after page, and you saying, "Wow, this Billy the Kid was really, 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 really a badass. <coughs> he really, he really was a badass." Then somebody see you on the street, and they say, "Hey." I heard you read about Billy the Kid thing, like that, you know. But how? I got I got the same assignment. Who was he? I don't. He said I don't know who he was. Maybe he was some nice guy or something. I don't know. How would you respond after reading about Billy the Kid to that person? How would you respond? Y'all in the same class. You did the reading. This person didn't. So y'all meet up after you read and know about him. You say, ah, he probably was a nice guy or something. I don't know. Probably did something good. How would you respond to that person? Oh, wow. So you see the point? That's the Bible. You learn about God by seeing how he dealt with humans. You see how he dealt with Jeremiah. You see, you see how he dealt with Noah. You see how he, you understand how he dealt with Lot. 
the conversations they had. That's how you know what kind of person God is. See? The concreteness is right there. Right there. That's all concrete. God approached them face to face. But if we really dig into the scriptures, We'll see God. We'll see who he is. Not just some fabulistic person. We'll see his anger. What he told his disciples to do when other disciples was bad. And all of this mayhem was going on. He's instructing uh, uh, Phineas to take action in the camp of Israel. We'll learn about all, how God is by his personality. Coupled with real life of how beautiful life is, the animals, the the grass, the blue sky above, there's no way we won't see God. There's no way we won't see the Lord. It's impossible. It's impossible. And on top of that, we have prayer. It's impossible. Or we will see God. But we got to want to see God. You understand? See, God knows the heart. We got to want to see Him. If we don't want to see Him, He's not going to show Himself to you. You can forget that. You can forget it. He's not going to do it. You got to want to see Him. What time is it here? Almost, almost. So, in a nutshell, talking about faith here. The Bible, or Quran, or whatever you believe in, is your faith. And why do I say a lot of books like that and not one? Ours is right! No, ours is right. Ours is right over here! No, we are the true religion. Ours is right! All roads don't lead to the same place if that's what you're thinking. No, they don't. But your relationship with the Lord does. And when you have your relationship with God, He will put you where you're supposed to be. He will put you there. He will let the truth come to you. He will let the truth come to you. And nobody can stop it. See, God says in His Word, He will not, never... Will he allow the righteous one to totter? He didn't say never will allow the baptized righteous one. He never said never will he allow the 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 unbaptized. He said the righteous one. He didn't say the saved righteous one. He didn't say the Christian righteous one. He didn't say the Muslim righteous one. He didn't say the Buddha right. He said righteous one to totter. Seek out God while he may be found. Because one day he not going to be found. One day that art door going to shut. And all of these people are going to seek out God but he's not going to be found. I'm not going to sit up here and boast in front of you like I'm going to be the ones in the ark. No, I'm not going to do that. I don't know. I might not be. I really might not be. But guess what? You might not be either. See, that's God's decision, isn't it? That's His decision. Who's going to be in the ark and who's not. So I'm not going to sit up here and boast in front of you like I mean it. You know, I'm teaching you guys. I'm okay, but I'm teaching you. I'm saved. So I'm teaching you guys. And I'm not saying anything wrong for any evangelist that does that. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying on a general sense, never will he allow the righteous one to totter. On a general sense. And that's a positive, something positive for us to carry with us. That God knows our heart. He knows what we want to do. You see. You see. God may say it's not time for you to come to me right now. You see. Like the Bible says. He let people stay out of his organization. To work out the will of the nations. 
and at the right time he'll come for you. How old was the apostle Paul when when Jesus approached him? God didn't have to let him go out like that. God could have approached him a long time ago. But God allowed him to be that way for a certain time, for a reason, you see. So certain people are not in a congregation for a reason. It's a reason. It's a divine reason. Do not, the scriptures say, do not lean upon your own understanding. Don't forget that. In all your ways, take notice of God and he will make your path straight. Do not lean upon your own understanding. See, man has a very pungent own understanding attitude with not only the Bible, the Quran, or life in general, but with everything in existence. I know everything. You can't tell me nothing. All own understanding stuff in the congregation. That brother or sister is in trouble because I saw them using a swear word. That brother and sister over there is in trouble. I saw them gambling. That, the, and that's how I know God ain't going because they're a sinner. All your own understanding. What did the Bible say? Don't go. Don't go Donald Duck shit. What did the Bible see? A lot of people not take. I don't even want to. I don't even see. I get upset and I don't want to. Let me calm down. Yeah, because I'm talking to a brick wall here. Because I know that's what people don't listen to me. They're going, bah, bah, and that pisses, it just really gets to me. You can't skip over God's word like that, okay? You're either going to take all of God or you're not. Ain't no shades of gray. Now, do not lean upon your own understanding. Trust in God with all your heart. And do not lean upon your own understanding. That right there covers a multitude of negativity, a multitude of lack of faith, a multitude of everything that's doubtful in spirituality, whether it's Muslim, Christian, or whatever else. Do not lean upon your own understanding. And I'm gonna do a sir. I'm gonna do a sir. Yeah, I'm about to. Say, I'm gonna do a, ser- a sermon about that because that's all that's going on right now is people's own understanding. You don't know nothing. God says the wisdom of the world is foolishness with Him. Foolishness. Foolishness. How do you know something? How do you know something? The Bible says, "Be careful that you're standing that you don't fall." How do you know something if the Bible say that? Don't be careful that you know all of this and you might fall. How do you know something if the Bible say that? See, these are the things we got to hold to heart. And this will build our faith in God by not leaning upon our own understanding. If we lean upon our own understanding, we dead. We think the worst about ourselves all the time. All the time. Whether it's how we look, how we talk, how we act, how this God never going to like me because of this. There is no God. There is no Jesus. It's all bullshit. It's all this. All this All this goes under your own understanding. What did the scripture say? Love God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul. And don't lean upon your own Understanding. See, that's telling you. It's like saying, if my child dropped that cup on the floor, they're going to get a spanking. And you give your child a certain look. So you tell your child, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. So your child, don't do it. Okay, that's the same way with God. Do not love God your whole with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole, and don't lean love trust in God with your whole heart, and don't lean upon your own understanding. 
It's the same thing with a child. Don't drop that cup on them. You're going to get a beating. See, if you trust in God, when your negativity come up in your head with your own understanding, he will be there to fix it. Now, the script, did the scriptures say, the, um, trust in God with your whole heart, your whole mind. Trust in God. Do not lean upon your own understanding because if you do, God going to come in and correct your thinking. Does it say that? See, certain things, I don't got to tell my child I'm going to whip his butt if he dropped that cup on the floor. I ain't got to tell my child that. Trust in God with all your heart and do not lean upon your own understanding. In all your ways, take notice of him and he himself will make your path straight. Everything is right there. There's no excuse for somebody to be pointing their finger at another Christian criticizing. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. See, your own understanding could take control over your whole mind and your service to God. Because you're leaning on your own. Don't lean on your own understanding. It's like saying don't touch the stove because it's hot. Don't go outside with a jacket. Don't go, go outside without a jacket when it's raining because you'll catch a cold. So in a way, it's like a warning. Do not lean upon your own understanding. Ain't no Donald Duck in it now. And yet and still, we got billions of people doing this, that, and the other. Well, when Jesus come back, we'll see what he has to say about that, okay? Because um, this is the change we've been looking for. Now, somebody who loves their country and all this can can beg to differ and say, Oh, we got to be just like Lot's wife. Oh, these things will be all right. We'll go right back to where we were Lot's wife all around here. When we know this is what we was looking for. Guys, this is it. We got to have faith. We got to continue to walk with faith. Without faith, the Bible says it's impossible to please God. Without faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. It's impossible. Impossible. How do we build our faith? By learning about the will of God and doing our best to appeal to it. And most important, most important, is loving God and getting to know what kind of person He is. See, God said, let's make man in our image, in our likeness. So God is a person. God says he regret creating humans. That's in the Bible. He regretted when he saw how messed up everything. We said God said he regrets. See, that's showing his sadness. God is a person with feelings and emotions, and we wouldn't know that if we don't talk to him and get to know who he is. He's a person. This way, we can strengthen our faith in God because, hey, what's faith? What's that? That's a word. This is my father. See the point? This is my dad. What's the word faith? What is that? The word faith will disappear. A lot of things, yeah, that's what I'm about to say. A lot of things in the Bible will disappear if you're close with God. A lot of things. So I'm going to end it right here, guys. I'm not going to get too much. So... Get to know God. Draw close to Him. Pray. And that's by prayer. That's by praying. Not out in the open and all the praying for somebody and all and all out open. Personal prayer. Get to know who God is. He a person. God is a person. So I wanna thank you guys for tuning in to this gathering in a colony.
And I hope we can really walk away with something positive from it. <sighs> well, we didn't. What time is it? And we preached a little over an hour. It's not that bad. So, yeah. Put a smile on your face, guys. We were here. We made it. Things falling apart. We just hit the thing. <laughs> we have dead going on. I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you, man. But it's reason to celebrate. The Apostle Paul said, what's more? I say rejoice, man, because we made it. We made it. Now it's just a question of who made it. <laughs> we made it because we ain't dead. We still here. But now it's a question of who made it. We made it, but who made it over to God's new kingdom? That's all it is a question of. And in time, we'll find out. You know, we'll find out. But um, we can't say we don't see the stuff no more. We can't say it no more because we see it. We saw the earthquakes and the pestilence and all that. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about that one horn when the beast broke off. The Babylon the Great was riding on. That one horn. First it was two horns. Then it was one horn of world power. What happened to that one world power? It's crumbling. We see it. Rejoice. Rejoice. So... We're going to end it with the Rashi poem. And it goes like this. My eyes see, but I am blind. My heart beats, but I am dead. With my hands I touch, but I cannot feel. Nonetheless, we're underwater, and yet we breathe. Keep breathing, guys. Keep breathing right on to the next gathering of the colony. And we'll be talking to you later. Have a blessed evening.